Hey everyone, it's Skippy. Today, I'm gonna go over all the new screenshots that Natsume just dropped this past week about their new game, Harvest Moon Home Sweet Home. This is a Harvest Moon game set to be released on Android and Apple iOS in August, so it's not that far away. The premise of this game is that your childhood friend has convinced you to move back home to revitalize the town of Alba, and unfortunately, most of the residents aren't happy you've come back to change the town, even if it's for the better. Let's get into some of these awesome screenshots and dive deep into the analysis I've got for you. I've already taken a look at these, so I've got some great talking points. Be sure to comment your thoughts on this upcoming Harvest Moon game as well, as I'd love to hear what you guys think. So in the first image that I have for you guys, we can see our main character in front of a farm as it looks, given that there's stuff for sale in the background. Now some key things to take note of this screenshot versus the Winds of Anthos, which is the Harvest Moon game that they released last year, is the way that the UI is formatted. So if you look in the top left, the day and the time and your hearts are there. And if you look in the top right, you have a section where you can click for inventory and maybe options or anything else I'm assuming. Now keep in mind this is going to be released on phone and mobile devices, tablets, so I'm guessing they moved everything up from the bottom to the top in order to help with the touchpad sensors at the bottom of the phone screen or the iPad or whatever you're going to end up playing it on. That's one of the biggest things I noticed about the UI and you can tell just by looking at this screenshot that was released before the Winds of Anthos came out. You can see the hearts down at the bottom and the time and the date in the map. Now, this another key thing here is that we don't have a map, so that's obviously not here. It's probably in one of those side panels underneath the three lines, is my guess, to save screen room for the actual game itself. Now, something I'd love to point out, and I will probably point out a lot, is there is a lot of actual detail in this photo in terms of texture with, like, the ground in comparison to the previous game that they had in a lot of different ways. So I actually really like that, and I'm assuming because based on most of these screenshots that I'm going to show you is that they're all set in a certain camera function to where you probably cannot move the camera. So they're able to pack more information onto each area you're in because it's not having to load new information all the time like when you have in 3D World. And I think that that actually will be a promising point given to make the game look a little bit more detailed in general. Now, of course, if you notice in the scene, the horse, the cow, the chickens, they are all the same. The main character looks very similar from the last game we had. So here in our next image, we have our character at a fishing pond trying to catch some small and some really big fish. So as I said before in the first image, the detail here is insane with the little blades of grass, the little different tiny pieces of plant matter that are all over the place. Because if you really look at the Winds of Anthos, from what I can remember and from the screenshots I've seen online is it's not this detailed. And it looks like it's possible some of these items you might be able to pick up as take home as well too, like the mushroom that's behind our main character here. I find that the water in general looks a little bit better. I know it had some shiny on it before, but I just think in general, the way that the water looks and some of the textures do look a little bit better than they did before. And in this next photo, we've got our main character standing on a dock, either in front of someone's house or maybe a fishing shop or a fishing related shop. And you can kind of see that they're looking out into the water, whether it to be sea or to a lake. I'm assuming it's the sea. The water looks fantastic. Um, I'd love to see how it moves to see if it's gonna look as good moving as it does in this still photograph. And we can see here that it's spring, Monday the 2nd, very sunny and it's 9.30 a.m. So that does give us indication that time is gonna go by the seconds as it did in the last game. Not super slow, but not super fast and definitely not gonna be going by 10s or 15s like we've seen in other games. Now in this next image, we have the main splash screen of the game title. So there's a lot to unpack here. And then you can see like a little town in the background, a bridge, a little tiny pond. I'm really curious to see how we're gonna navigate this area, if it is a navigatable area in a, like a large space or if it kind of zooms in and we're able to kind of go through piece by piece. Now in this next image, we've got our main character again, as we can see. Definitely looks like new clothing for the guys in this, which I love. I think it looks really cute and I'm hopeful that we can change out the colors and the style of that. We can definitely change the skin tone, the eye color, and the hair as we were able to in the previous game. And I'm pretty sure this is a cutscene screenshot as you can see from the angle that we're looking at. And I would also like to say it's probably at the beginning of the game because there's leaves on the bus stop sign and covering the building that's behind us as well too. So this gives us a good indication that this is gonna be something we'll see at the starting point. 
Now I will say the characterizations obviously are identical to the Winds of Anthos. On this next image, we have a screenshot of the beginning of the game, I'm assuming, because it says, I'm hoping to turn Alba into a bright, bustling bird it once was. And we can see a field that has a bunch of crops in them. They look like they're pretty good crops. They don't look like they're dying or anything. You can see that there's some carrots and then some other crops in the background there, maybe some melons and then a little bridge. And in the very back, you can see there's orange trees and apple trees as well, too. Now in this next photo, we have our character standing on a bridge between two different pieces of land and a giant waterfall in the background. So obviously it's very, very pretty the way that it looks, the texture, the water, everything I've been saying so far, and a very stagnant camera setting. So I'm assuming you probably just walk through here uh, to get to the next section. Um, I'm not quite sure what else would really go on here besides it maybe being like a photo place that you could take photo like how you could in the other game and in other games kind of like this where they kind of have a special camera angle to take a photo of different things behind you or in front of you. So I guess we'll find out. There is a sign off to the left and I imagine if you click on that, it'll probably tell you where you're going in particular. Now here we get some interesting photos of characters. But obviously the characters that we interact with are all new. They all look very similar to the characters before, but they have different skin tones, eye color, hair color, hairstyles as well too, and clothing. And so this is Hugo, which he does have the little flower next to him, which means he's going to be a marriage candidate which in this case they actually show all the characters they show are marriage candidates so we get like about three or four of them right off the bat which is great and so he's saying he should close down the restaurant for a while and overhaul the menu probably because it's not doing very well because the whole town isn't doing very well so our main character here is probably just going to tell him hugo that we're going to make it better and everything's going to be great pretty much and i'm really interested to see the kind of impact we'll actually have on each individual person and what they do in the town if they have a shop like this and this image we get to meet Braden, who knows that we're starting up a farm and is a little bit not so sure if we know exactly what we're doing now he's got the little flower and the note next to his name meaning he is a marriage candidate and you can befriend him as well and it looks like we're probably by his house it's possible he might have come to our farmland uh, either way, he's not exactly convinced that we're gonna do anything good for this town at all, but I guess we'll see. I'm definitely interested to know what he does in this town specifically. And then the last image I have for you guys is our character meeting Harriet, who is also a marriage candidate, and given from the dialogue it appears that she is a fisherman. So maybe she lives in that little house by the beach, or she lives around there. Either way, she is a new person that we've been introduced to that lives in this town, and generally the vibe I'm getting from them is they are not very happy, which is exactly what Natsume said in their statement. So it's going to be interesting to see how we turn these people into people that don't really like us to people that love us. And like all these, all the backgrounds are blurred behind you, so you can focus on the conversation happening with you and the character models and the expressions that they're going to give as well too. I'm hopeful that they kind of move, kind of like in the past, and have a little bit of personality to them. So overall, when it comes to our character, I'd say we got some really great promise with what looks like new clothing. Like I said, you guys let me know. I know the Winds of Anthos had different sets of clothing you could get, so let me know if these are new. I will say that all the hairstyles I've seen are the same from the previous game, so I don't think that that is going to change. Now, to discuss how this is going to work, I'm not really sure. I haven't seen anything online yet about pricing or microtransactions, but pretty much when you have a mobile game, they're gonna go into one or two directions. So, I would be concerned if the game launches for any more than $10 on the Apple Store or Google Play. I'm not quite sure how many people, unless if you are an avid mobile gamer, would pay more than $10 for a game like this. And given these types of games are anywhere between $40 to $60 on average. Now there might be microtransactions in the game for cosmetic features such as new clothing, new hairstyles, hats, different types of looking animals for all we know. It's hard to say, but I am concerned that that might be a possibility and the only time that it becomes a problem is when it becomes pay to win. So I guess we're going to see if the microtransactions are only cosmetic and then you can play the game normally. Um, I don't think we'll have much problem, but I will say if the game launches for free, 
and then there's a bunch of microtransactions and some that help you build your farm faster, that could be a problem for some people. They might not like that. Or if it's filled with ads, if the game is free as well too. I'm very excited to see some actual gameplay, to see how it actually looks, to see the performance of the game, make sure that it's gonna be smooth. Most screens will play games past 60 FPS nowadays, so even up to 165 frames per second on phone screens and tablets and stuff. So I'm, I really wanna see how this game is going to perform on them and to see how it'll affect people's equipment as well too if it gets too hot too fast or if it staggers or has a lot of bugs or anything like that so these are all things that are kind of new when it comes to that specifically because we we just don't know how it's going to be or at least i can't say for sure and if you guys have any idea from any other type of game like this that's been launched on apple or android please let me know because i am really curious on this Another concern I have is if exploration isn't as grandeur as it was in the previous game, finding wild animals and collecting them as pets might not be a feature in this game. It's hard to say right now, but do keep that in mind with the way that we have seen the world so far, and if there is less of an area to explore. The world itself is definitely not as large as the Winds of Anthos, given the platform and from what we've seen so far, which might not be a bad thing. It was revealed at the end of May in a Twitter post before we got the actual screenshots last week. So this is coming out very, very quickly from the initial release. And if you're worried about what this means for the Harvest Moon genre and future games, I wouldn't be too concerned. Because if you look at the assets that are being used, it's very copy and paste from their main release last year. And if you look at the Marvelous Direct that they had, right after that they announced this game specifically. They still talked about Story of Seasons, but they didn't even give out really a name that I could tell, um, and not a whole lot of information on it too, just some more screenshots uh, and some vague information we've had since last year. So this year is not the year for a brand new Story of Seasons, brand new Harvest Moon. So this is kind of like a filler in between the next big, next gen, Harvest Moon and Story of Season games that are going to come out in 2025. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Do you like this game? Do you like mobile games? I'm actually really curious to know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps my channel out whenever I have positive interactions with my videos. Check out my channel for other Harvest Moon, Story of Seasons, Stardew Valley videos, and upcoming new games as well too. And I will see you guys in the next one.